ICF family, we are so glad that you have chosen to join us today for our time of uh, corporate worship, um, of prayer and uh, singing and hearing God's word, communion and tithes and offering. We have a lot of announcements today, and one of those is, is Happy Father's Day to you guys online. Happy Father's Day to you guys here in person, and uh, we're so glad that you have come to us and, and joined us in worship on this fe special Father's Day weekend here in Honduras. Some of the announcements that we have is looking far ahead to the future, but it'll be here before we know it, is March the 29th, which is a Saturday, we will be having a general church meeting here at the church um, where we are located right now. It will be a hybrid service, not March, May, May the 29th, something like that. May 29th, we will have a biannual church meeting. It'll be here at the church. It'll be a hybrid meeting for those that want to attend online and those that can attend in person. We encourage you to come and be with us here that day following our worship service on May the 29th. Some other things that we're looking forward to in the next few weeks is on Good Friday, we'll be having an online virtual Good Friday service at 7 p.m., both on Facebook and YouTube, and that will be led by Brother Roger. And then we will be having an in-person Easter service on that Saturday, Easter Saturday, at 3.15 as a normal worship service. And then at a virtual sunrise service on Resurrection Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So we encourage you to attend in person for the Easter worship service or join us online for all three, either on Facebook or YouTube. We have a lot of stuff going on in the church in the next few weeks. So we're just excited that you have chosen to be a part of our fellowship. And uh, if you want to get plugged in or want to get involved in something, just let us know. And we would be more than glad to give you information on how you can join us and join our fellowship here at International Christian Fellowship Church. This morning, our call to worship comes from Psalms 98, verse 4 through 6, and it says, Shout joyful to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice, and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyful before the Lord, the King. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come into your house today to worship your name. Lord, let our ears be attentive to your Holy Spirit. Let it be attentive to, to the words and the message that Brother Ernie has prepared for us today. Lord, and we just give you honor and glory for the things that you have done in our personal lives and the things that you're doing in the life of International Christian Fellowship. We are so blessed. And, and a lot of the time, I'm left personally speechless at the goodness and the things that you have brought us through as a fellowship and the things that you are preparing for us for in the future. We give you honor and glory for all of it, Lord, and we cannot wait to see what this next season of church life ministry has for us. Lord, be with the worship team as they lead us in worship this morning. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hey, Dad. It's Maddie and Chase. Happy Father's Day. We love you and miss you and hope you're doing well.
Father's Day to every one of you. God bless you and hope to see you soon. And a special congratulations to our daddy, Chris Gillen. Say, amo, Sophie. Amo. <laughs> um, today we would like to recognize some people that have been a part of our fellowship for a while. And uh, this is their last Sunday with us for a while. And uh, we just want to thank them um, and have them come up, acknowledge them, and present them with a gift. Um, Ken and Deanne Vanderwall, if you guys would come up real quick. Give them a round of applause. We would just like to give you a token of our appreciation um, for your dedication to the church and your help and uh, everything that you've done to help us and uh, part of the things that you've been involved in in the church in the past few years. So we know that um, right now this time and season comes to an end, but we pray that our paths will cross again, maybe in the near future, and that God will bless you as you return to a different type of ministry for the next few months. And whatever God has prepare, prepared for you, we send you with love and our blessing. And we are so appreciative for your dedication to the country of Honduras. We would love to pray over you real quick before you, you go. Lord, we thank you for Ken and Deanne and their ministry and the meaning they have to us here at ICF. Lord, we pray for them as they return back to the States. And, and seek your guidance and your wisdom and what their next step should be in ministry, whether it's that to go um, to some other place in the world, to be missionaries there in their own community in Michigan, or maybe to come back to Honduras and serve with us here in this fellowship and uh, people here in Honduras. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for safety and guidance. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We would also like to uh, recognize our fathers today. We have a small um, token um, for our fathers. Um, they're located up front on each side of the auditorium. So after worship today, feel free to come up and pick up a, just a small token of our appreciation for your dedication, leadership, and your families, and uh, in our church too. Um, you know, without the men in the church, we would have a hard time. And you guys rally around us and lead us, and we are thankful for the guidance that you give our families and in our church here at ICF. This morning, we'll continue to move into our time of offering. And here at ICF, we believe that the tithes and offering is not only just a ritual that we do, but it's also a form of worship, right up there with singing and prayer, reading scripture, and hearing God's word. So this morning, if you're um, with us in person, we would love for you to drop off your offering at the back deposit box by the door as you leave this morning, or if you're not with us, give online um, through our website. That's available for you as well. So whatever is the best way for you, we d definitely encourage our, our members to give their tithes. And, uh, you know, if, if you're visiting with us and want to give an offering, that's great as well. We greatly appreciate it. The ministry of ICF has been tremendously blessed, and we continue to see God do mighty things. Our verse for scripture this morning um, to give thanks for our offering comes from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 29. And it says, give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O wash, worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Lord, um, so we thank you. <laughs> I got tongue tied there for a second. Uh, but thank you for your dedication, continual um, giving to the church and the ministry of it. Um, worship team will come back and lead us now. Three. Happy Father's Day. We love you, yeah. Dad. Happy Father's Day. We love you.
I just want to say happy Father's Day, Dad. Um, thank you for always being present in my life and for being such a good dad. Uh, working with children from hard places, um, the importance of that is not lost on me. I love you, Dad. This morning, uh, we want to take uh, any prayer requests that uh, anybody in the congregation might have. Um, and so... If there's anything that you would like prayer for or about, I know we're going to pray for the Vanderwalls, um, the trip, all aspects of their trip. Is there anything else that I know it was mentioned um, that the Warners, Mark Warner, has a eye procedure, a cataract procedure, and so he's requesting prayer. So. Uh, please remember the Warners um, in the, in your prayers. Is there anything else? All right, let's go to the Lord um, in prayer. God, you are mighty. You are wonderful. You are gracious. Your love extends from the creation of the world to the sending of your son, and to forever when we get to celebrate with you. Lord, we thank you because you have blessed us in so many ways. Primarily, primarily our blessing is in knowing you and being adopted and received as your children. Lord, we come today with requests that are on our heart. We pray for the Vanderwalls. We pray for travel, for your mercy. Um, on the road and in the air and the combination of, of that trip. Lord, we pray for uh, Brother Mark Warner and for his eye surgery. Lord, we pray that you will guide the doctor's hands and that you will just allow um, it to be a simple and quick procedure that will restore him back to being able to see uh, properly. Lord, it's amazing how in, in, intricate that our bodies are made. And Lord, we thank you for uh, the wisdom of those doctors that are able to um, work on it and make it in a way that produces a better way of life. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we continue to pray for Honduras. We continue to pray for the country for uh, the political aspects, for the um, suffering due to a disease, due to um, hurricanes and the recovery that many people are trying to do. We pray most of all that we will be effective in this country in shining your light. Lord, we pray um, that Jesus will be glorified through our lives and through this church and we just pray that many lives will be touched and brought to you we thank you for that opportunity we thank you for giving that as as an objective for your children and we pray that we are doing our job every day at that lord we pray for this church we pray for the ups and the downs but we know that you are with us through it all and we give you praise in that. We praise you in so many ways. Lord, we just uh, pray that um, we not be discouraged, but that we keep on uh, serving you in, in every way that we can. Lord, we, uh, we just thank you for listening to us, listening to our prayers, listening to our praises, as it is certainly a praise to be gathered together in your name, worshiping together in unity. Lord, I almost forgot to pray for the future of the church with regards to the pastor search and the pastor, um, uh, the different candidates that have been brought to the church, and we just uh, pray that you um, guide and lead and that you make your will uh, known clearly among each of us um, and, and among that team especially. Um, and we thank you for that. 
give us uh, a good time listening from your word. May we, may our ears and eyes be open to understanding. May we be challenged and want to serve you more every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Father Day, my dear Father. I love you so much and so blessed and uh, honored to be named your son. Uh, thank you so much for all your love, care, pow pow sometimes. I love you dearly and uh, happy Father's Day to all of you fathers. Be blessed and uh, be covered with our Heavenly Father's love. Uh, the best love ever. Uh, God bless you all. We love you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Well, we, we thank you for your presence today. Um, we thank you for your patience more than that. You know, we're in a new facility. We're coming back all fresh with all this stuff. No power, sound system, so it's kind of crazy. But I appreciate you all listening and reminding me to take off my mask. That, that will help. So when, when I was asked, when I scheduled to preach this morning, um, you know, Rodney Walls is our, is our kind of our fill-in default preacher um, and he, he chose the Sundays that, that he was going to preach. And, and I said, I'll just take the 21st since it was open. Little did I know at the time that it was Father's Day. And so I began, I was looking at some things and, and began a, a sermon lesson on lamentations. And so I realized that lamentations probably would not be good, would not be good for Father's Day. Well, I began to, to go around a, a Father's Day sermon and, um, really couldn't get my hands around that, and so I don't know if God led me to this sermon or if it was my ADHD, but either way, we're going we're gonna to go with it. So let me start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, today, each of us, in our own individual ways, knowing, Lord, that each of us has our own needs, and so we ask that you speak to us each day, particularly this day, and Lord, have the message or have the interaction or create the space, Lord, so that you can touch each of us in our own individual way. And so, Lord, I particularly pray this morning that you take me out of this sermon and use your words for your will this morning in, in what we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So naturally, I began to, to, to follow on some, uh, some sermons with, with Father's Day, traditional Father's Day. You think about the prodigal son, there's lots of lessons in that, right? comparing the characteristics of a good father and comparing that to God and, and how he really fits in with all that. But I didn't go there today. I'm starting today with the Ten Commandments. You know, we've all heard of them since we were little, since we were Caleb's age. Color in the sheets with Moses holding the tablets up. Color in the sheets that actually have the one through ten and writing out the, the different commandments. So the first four verses of, of the Ten Commandments deal with our relationship with God. So they are, in, in just short, summarized versions, I am the Lord your God. You should not have any other God other than me. You should not use the Lord's name in vain. And finally, that you should honor the Sabbath. So the first four deal with our relationship with God. But then the, the next six deal with our relationship with each other, with other humans, with our relationships in, in, here on this earth. And so the, the fifth one, the first one they list that deals with interpersonal relationships says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. It's a command with a promise. Give honor to your parents so that you'll have a quality life. It also alludes to the fact that you might have a long life, but the real emphasis is the quality existence that, that will come with it. And so it's fitting today that we talk about this verse and really open our discussion on Father's Day with, with this lesson. So I was reading a, um, an article for, in preparation for the sermon this morning by John Huffman, who is a senior pastor in California. And he said the reason this is included is because, you know, we have a natural tendency as humans to fight authority. It's, it's a natural, particularly as we become teenagers, right? There's a, there's a resistance to authority. Whether that be God's authority, whether it be authority to our parents, or whether it just be authority in general, oftentimes we as humans have a, have a fight against authority. So we want to be free. We want to kind of do our own things. And, and those of you with children know that, particularly the ones that are 
have children that are a little older, you know, you go through the stages. When they're little, it's like dad can do everything. He knows all things, right? Then they get about 13, right? And then it becomes, dad's so dumb. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't understand. Well, then they get a little older, and they begin to think, well, you know, he's not so bad. He's lived through this. I can maybe listen to him. That, and they come looking for money. And so they're bound to listen to you, trying to get some, some little extra cash on the weekend. So our walk with God is a little bit like that. I remember as a child in Sunday school hearing the stories of Noah and the Exodus and thinking, you know, wow, God is really powerful. He can do all kinds of things. I mean, you think about the creation of the world, and that's just incredible. And so as a child, I remember thinking, God, I want to be on his team. You know, he's the man. But there was a time later in my life where I really didn't have that good an attitude. I was already kind of feeling that wandering, right? So I can't say that I rejected God, but I surely didn't feel like I needed him. I had a good job. I had a house. I had plenty of food. I was working. I was having fun. I was doing, doing the things that I wanted to do. I was going and I was playing rugby. I was hanging out with my friends. I was going to college football games, working some, you know, it was just kind of living the life, right? So I often didn't go to church. I often didn't pray. Sunday mornings were really a time to sleep late so you could recover from the late Saturday night. But as a child in between those two, I was at church every Sunday, every Wednesday night. If the church doors were open, Ernie Sizemore was there. And I have to thank my parents for that. My father always insisted that we go, and he always made a way for us to get there. It didn't matter if he had to leave work or if he had to come back from Atlanta, whatever he did, he made sure that we were at church. Now, they were not so committed. They didn't come to Sunday school. They didn't come to the, the Sunday night worship or the Wednesday night, but they made sure we were there. But they were there every morning at 11 o'clock for Sunday worship. We sat about eight rows from the back, right behind the McKnight's, next to the big column. I guess we sat in the back for easy escape if we needed to. But I'm, just, I'm grateful for their decision to, for my faith walk, because they were committed for me when I needed to be there. They understood that cycle, that they're going to know everything, that they're not going to know anything, and then gradually they get smarter as you get older. They understood those things. And they understood that I would see them as the enemy for a period of time. I was going to be against them as my testosterone levels went up and my independence was fighting for, for its prominence in my life. They knew that I would listen to others more than I would listen to them. And so thankfully, there were some wonderful people at that little Presbyterian church that we grew up in. I remember John Stuhl, the, the youth pastor. John preached, didn't preach often, but I remember still to this day, he preached a sermon where he was out jogging and ran into a street sign. And I remember everything about that sermon, oddly enough. There was another lady, Gloria Jennings, who later in life uh, went back to the seminary got her degree, and was becoming a pastor. As she was learning, she was very methodical, not super exciting in her sermons. And we had an associate pastor who was older in his life and, and not very method, or was very methodical and not very exciting in his sermons. So we joked, remember I was in high school, we joked that they were the dynamic duo. Well, later in life, Gloria Jennings, that lady, became one of my mentors. She taught Sunday school, and she brought Sunday school alive. She made the Bible reach out and grab you and make you feel a part of it like you were there when she would tell the stories. And so I'm so grateful for Gloria and for people like John Stuhl in my life because they didn't give up on me. I was there. I might have been forced to be there. Usually it was by, you know, I was usually in agreement, but they knew that I was there and I needed to hear the word. Eventually I graduated college. I got a good job. And I got re-engaged with that same church. I began to go to those Sunday school classes with Gloria, sitting with people that used to teach me and becoming friends with them, getting to know them, becoming brothers and sisters in, in that church. I re-engaged with my father at that time as well. You know, we had been kind of battling because of that independence. I re-engaged with him. 
And oftentimes in the mornings, I would have breakfast with him. We would come down. I knew where he'd be. Every morning, he was at the Waffle House on Washington Road in Augusta. And so I didn't need an invitation. I would just show up. He was glad I was there. He was always there every morning. And so I would come up. We would spend, spend time together. So my father and I grew closer day after day, waffle after waffle. And I eventually joined him in the family business. And my respect and love and trust for him grew every morning. And the bond that we, we built there in the mornings allowed us to work together well. And when we had disagreements, it allowed us to continue to work together with trust and respect. Now, my father, you have to understand, was a, a drill sergeant in the Marine Corps. He served in the Frozen Chosen in Korea. But my mother was the tough one. She was very strict. She was very much a disciplinarian. I don't even think she liked kids. She doesn't deal with her grandkids until they turn about 14, and then she starts engaging with them. But she ran the house like I imagine that my father led his platoon of new recruits on that, on that drill sergeant field. You know, he was, he was going to push them. So she ran the house that way. But my dad was always quiet at home. He let her do that. Work was a different story. My father was in his essence at work. He was the boss. He could be himself at work. Now, he was tough, too. But he was crusty on the outside, but sweet like a marshmallow on the inside. So I loved him for that. He would often go, and, and we were in the security guard business, and so often you'd find him paying um, for one of, the, one of the guys to get a GED, or one of their kids needed college tu tuition for a, for a quarter, some, maybe a, a power bill or two. And my father would pay those, and he would never admit it. He would never tell you. He would never admit it, even if, even if asked. But had I not worked for him for all those years, I would have never known his heart for people. I would have never understood my father. And I loved him in a way that I never could have before, because I knew him, because I'd spent time with him, because we'd had breakfast every morning at the Waffle House. It's like that with our Heavenly Father, too. As new Christians, like like children, we're enthralled with the grace and mercy early on. We're, we hear the stories, we're amazed at God's authority and power. And we seek His Word at every turn and get excited about some of those things. Then often, complacency hits. We become busy with work. We become busy with children. We fade away. Um, you've often heard those same stories. You're in the same Sunday school class. You hear the same sermons. So that complacency, and maybe sometimes our faith sometimes wanes a little bit. So we have those times, and we begin to question whether we need to attend church. And sometimes we even become critical. But you know, we're not alone in all that. Because if you read Psalms, King David had many of those same attributes. There were there time and time again he would wander. There time and time again where he would struggle, where he would stray from God. And then he would turn around and the next verse we would hear some glorious poem where he's begging for God's forgiveness, asking for God to be with him for his presence because he knew what was important. He knew he needed to come back around and be in the presence of the Almighty God. So this complacency doesn't necessarily mean, though, that we didn't need an external change. We don't necessarily need to go looking elsewhere. Sometimes it means that we need to look inside our own hearts. Maybe we need to go deeper in our own faith. Maybe we need to engage in places where we're not engaged now. Maybe you're called to be a, more engaged in a mission here. Maybe you're called to be in the teaching ministry within the church. Maybe even in leadership, if administration is your, is your thing. So we begin to ask first, don't look elsewhere. First look at your own heart and ask the question, what's the next step for me? Do I need to go deeper? Do I need to engage more? Am I putting out the effort that my God demands of me? Then as we come back together and reignite our commitment... We begin to remember the importance of our faith. So we, as we come back together, we remember how important it was, how fundamental it is in our lives. 
and we begin to seek God's presence in our lives, we begin to seek his will and do his work in our daily lives. So let's, let's turn to Hebrews 10, 23. It's way back in the back. Hebrews 10, 23. Whew, it's hard to read in the dark. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We belong in the church together. We belong with fellow Christians. This fellowship challenges us. It teaches us. It helps us to grow. It also keeps us from drifting spiritually. Then it gives us an opportunity to serve together and maybe to serve one another if that may be the case at some point. The Bible reminds us in, 12, in Romans 12, 1, that corporate worship is a way of presenting ourselves to God and worshiping Him in a spiritual way. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And the Bible also tells us in Matthew, where two or three are gathered, there am I among them. So we don't have to worry. When we come together to worship God, He's there with us. He promises when two or three are gathered in His name, particularly if you're worshiping them, that He will be present. So we, we don't have to worry about that. We know that God is with us in those times. So when we come together and worship, it's an opportunity to experience God's presence personally. It may be in a sermon. It may be in a song. It might be in a prayer. And it might even be in one of those calm, quiet moments when the world seems to pause. But also gives us time to be held accountable to our brothers and sisters. Mature Christians give and accept this accountability with love. From Colossians 3.16, we read, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonish admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. What's unique about coming together worship, not only are we worshiping God, we're also time to build up each other as we worship God together. Remember the story of my father? All those meetings at the Waffle House? It's during that time that my love and respect for him grew and grew. So when things got tough, I could accept them. He would be critical, and I could accept it and understand that they were in love and that they were in my best interest. He was teaching me and building me up at the same time. Our church fellowship works like this. When we come to church regularly, we get to know one another. It creates a bond. It creates a friendship and encouragement established on a Christian foundation. Knowing that you're not alone in struggles can be empowering. Maybe a word of encouragement is what you need from a brother. When you're down, you have brothers to go to for help and sisters. And when you're desperate, there are men and women that you can call. But also like that, those young adults, when you get off the path, that straight and narrow, there are people there to help. Sometimes just being in the presence or knowing that you're going to church will keep you on that path because you've got to face those friends and you've got to explain to them where you are. Sometimes diving into God's word with that friend will get you through that issue. And sometimes it's just in the word of challenge and accountability from our brothers and sisters. But from brothers and sisters, we should receive that, that accountability and those challenges in love. But we have to remember first if we're giving it, we need to give it in love first. God wants us in church together to build each other up and to build the church up. Christian life was never meant to be solitary. 
In the Bible, it talks about many things of the, ch- of the, the church body. The church body, it talks about the flock. It talks about the body of believers. Uh, there's so many different words that it uses, but they all talk about groups. They all talk about groups of people coming together, not individuals. So being together is what draws us to one another, being in church together, and brings us closer to God. And each individual is an important part of worship. So you may be sitting there wondering, how can I contribute? What can I do? I'm just a so-and-so, or I'm just John, or I'm just Mary. I don't have anything to offer in church. But the Bible tells us that's not true. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. All this for the church. All this to bring us together in unity, to bring glory to God, to serve the purpose of the church, and to bring more people to Christ. As my father and I continued to meet at the Waffle House, we continued to work together and grew closer. Each morning, our, our relationship was nurtured. My love and respect for him grew deeper and deeper. And I would love to have love to have one more waffle with him. In church, we experience the same thing with God. In his name and his presence, we gather and we sing. We listen to his word, we hear sermons, we share his love, we serve one another. We grow closer to Him. Our love for Him grows deeper and deeper. As we grow closer to one another, unified by our love of God, it builds us up. Stronger as individuals and stronger as a church too. A unified strength in church. That's what God wants. Jesus knew this and emphasized it with His disciples. He called them together near the end to have one last meal. He knew tough times were ahead. He'd prepared them for it, but he didn't quite think they were ready. So he called them together as one body of believers, as one church, to support each other, to encourage each other, and to build up the church. That's what God wants of us, those same purposes, to grow closer to God, to support one another, and to build up the church. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Father, we come together to worship today, Lord. We celebrate your presence in this fellowship of believers. We give our lives to you. As we enter this time of communion, Lord, we acknowledge your covenant with us, and we accept it as our own. So we partake of these elements today, Lord. Lord, we ask that you make them holy, make them special, make them symbolic of your life, death, resurrection, and your triumphant return. Use them to bring us together as brothers and sisters to build your church. Use them to remind us of your great love for us. Amen. So he called his disciples together as one church in his presence, and he told them of his future and its meaning. Then he gave thanks, reciting the old traditional prayer. But he concluded by adding one phrase, that he was the bread that God was providing to the world. So Jesus prayed, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, for giving us bread out of the earth. This is my body given for you. Then Jesus gave them a cup like he would give to the father of a bride, expressing the commitment and covenant to prepare for marriage. Traditionally, the groom would then go and build a room on his father's house before returning for the bride. Jesus promises that he's preparing a place for us. And so today, we drink this wine, remembering his covenant with us. He invites us to drink, reminding us that we have been bought with a price, saying, Do this 
in remembrance of me. It is not just a remembrance. It is a covenant and a commitment. We look forward to Jesus' return in glory as he fulfills this covenant. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we await the arrival of your son Jesus. And Lord, so in this time, we live our lives in such a way that people will see Jesus in us. And so that when he does return, Lord, that we will be ready and they will be ready. So Lord, we ask you inspire us and guide us each day. Direct us to live more like Jesus so that when he returns, we're all ready. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Opportunity in the back um, for you to take pictures with your father. If you don't have any kids here, take one with your wife or take a picture by yourself. We would be more than glad to help you take a selfie. Um, just again, it's been so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, for our benediction, let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. God bless.